Now when we understand how to create new pages and routes in our Next.js application, let's start off with our first application in this Next.js course, where we're gonna learn how to create counter, how to fetch data, how to create to-do list, and much more. Go with Sloba. So let's first clean up the folders that we don't need in our project. And this is the contact page that we learned actually how to create new pages and new routes. So I'm just gonna remove this one and let's create new routes for the pages that we're gonna use in our first application. So let's close off this page and in the app folder, let's create the first one and this is gonna be for the counter. So create new folder and name it as counter. Obviously the same, obviously we follow the same convention move this into the app folder and let's create a new page, page.js. And I'm gonna use the snippet for faster creation, react arrow function with default export. And we're gonna name this one as counter like so. Okay, now we can duplicate this page or this entire folder. So just copy paste and we can rename this one to be, the next one is gonna be bar. We're gonna display different drinks and learn how to fetch the API. So let's just rename this to bar and this bar and here bar. Now let's duplicate this one as well. And let's rename this one. The third one is gonna be to-do list. So let's just name it to-do list. And let's update the page itself to say to-do list like so. Let me copy this on these two places. Now let's create another one. We're going to have five pages here. So let me copy paste once again. So let's rename this one. Next one is going to be query. Let's make it lower lowercase query. And let's update the page, the component itself query. Here is going to be query and let's export default query as well. And the last one is going to be Prisma, but we're going to learn obviously how to use Prisma. So let me rename this one to Prisma. Prisma like so. And once again, let's update the page or the actual component to say Prisma, Prisma, Prisma. And with this, we have created all the pages that we're gonna need in our first application. Okay, now we have created all the components and all the pages that we are gonna use in our first application. But now I wanna install some additional things uh, that we will need in order to style our application. The first one is tailwind typography. So this will help us to make our text much more beautiful. So for the installation, let's just for first install this package. And let me go and open up the terminal here. And let me open up another bash here. Now we just paste this npm install code. Let me just wait for a couple of seconds for terminal to refresh. And let's install this package. Now let's go and require this in the, in the plugins for the Tailwind. So let's copy this require import. And now we can go to Tailwind configuration file here in your root directory. And let's scroll down to the plugins and we can require this typography plugin. And the second one is a Daisy UI. So what I like about Tailwind is that you have all classes predefined already. But the problem with Tailwind is when you start writing more complex components, you get with a ton of uh, classes, as you can see here. So the solution is to uh, include the Daisy UI, which wraps all these common classes for buttons, cars, and these components that you're using across your application and gives you a wrapper classes. So let's install that. So once again, I'm just gonna copy this installation command from NPM, and I'm gonna install the Daisy UI latest. And then we're just gonna include that into the plugins here. And one thing that you need to be aware of is that uh, Daisy UI needs to come after the Tailwind typography. So Daisy needs to come late. late. Daisy needs to come uh, as the latest import here. And that's all we need in order to import uh, Tailwind typography and Daisy UI. Now, before we proceed with coding our first project, I want to make sure that you understand the core concepts of Tailwind. So let's just start off how you usually build components. So you first build out, let's say you want to build out this card component. So you would usually build out HTML or JSX depending on what you're using. So you would define your own custom classes here. 
and then you would go in the, in the style and add those classes and add styles here. So instead of doing this process, Tailwind has a faster approach. So you would write right away JSX code or HTML once again, and then you would add predefined classes to style your component. So as you can see, they have different sets of classes. So here we can see that they have padding and they added padding six. Usually uh, point one represents the four pixels. And then you usually, if you want to get to the exact final number, you would just multiply six times four and you get what is the padding. So 24. So there are a number of classes and I would highly advise you to go through their documentation and learn more about what utility classes they have at the disposal. So let's see what are like the default ones are like padding and margin. So you can always use their search. This is something that I use um, all the time. So let's say for the padding, so you can see how we can add padding. So there are classes that, for example, you can reset the padding to zero. So P dash zero, and this would set the padding to zero pixels. If you want to add, let's say padding on top, you would add this class PT dash six, and this would add 24 pixels on top. So padding right, this is the class for that. Padding bottom, PB dash eight, PL dash two, this would add uh, padding of eight pieces on the left side and you get the idea so you first have the p which stands for padding this is also the same for margin as well and then you define where you want to add that and at the end you have the size the next one is uh, i will just mention a couple of these uh, which i use the most but obviously i'm not going to mention all the classes that they have so for example the width you can set the pretty much everything you can imagine so here you can set the width uh, to different sizes they have predefined here and once again the one point represents four pixels and you can also set the fraction of, of a width or actually this is the class that i use the most is width full which gives the component the full width the next one is uh, the hover focus and active all these different modifiers that you can use on your components so let's say you have this button and you have a default uh, background color and when I said the color, they also have their uh, custom palette. So if you go to colors, you can see you can use different set of these colors. And how you reference them is you just reference the name of the palette or the color and then just the number of the shade. Very, very useful. So let's say you want to set the background color of this button to BG-Violet 500. And then you can also modify the hover effect. So you just add here, modify a hover and then BG-Violet 600. But not only that, you can also uh, work on the active class as well here. So as you can see here, it resets the active BG Violet to 700. Once again, I highly advise you to go and check the Elvin documentation to learn about uh, their classes. And uh, it's going to be much more familiar once I start coding. So you don't have any, any hesitation. Documentation is your biggest friend here. And although that I like Tailwind very much, uh, the one problem with Tailwind may come up and you can see just in this example so here we have a simple button and just for this uh, one button see how many classes you need to add and I actually have here three dots so the problem with tailwind becomes that you keep adding so many classes to the buttons and to other elements that you're using that it becomes a little bit clustered so you cannot see what you're doing and especially if you want to add like click events to to different handling on your elements it becomes very messy so this is the reason, as I mentioned before, why we use Daisy UI in our project here. So as you can see here, we can go and see the components and just let's see how button looks like in the Daisy UI. So Daisy UI has been built on top of the Tailwind and it uses Tailwind classes, but it just groups them. So here we have exactly the same button. Obviously, it's different color. But if you go and check JSX, you only need to add one class and that's it. So you get this button with all the hover effects and different focus and, uh, you know, different animations. And it's very easy to change the, how it looks. So you can just add, let's say you have here predefined classes. And if you want to add button neutral, primary, accent, whatever you want, it's very easy to update it. So also it's very easy to add different styles of it. So here you have different state colors. If you want to make the button outlined, uh, to, to make it smaller, larger, to make it responsive or wide. So there are different number of uh, predefined classes in Daisy UI, and we're gonna use this across uh, our application to speed up the process. They have amazing components. So if we go back and see here, there are so many amazing things that you can use. For example, Carousel. So if you go here and if you check 
check out this beautiful carousel. So, and if you inspect our JSX code, we can see that we only need a couple of classes to create this. So we need carousel and carousel item. And that's it. This is all we need in order to create a carousel. That's just amazing. So yeah, again, I highly advise you to go and check out their documentation to get yourself a little bit familiar, but we're not gonna use any advanced components or advanced features of it. So, but having yourself familiar with the basic concept and basic classes, it's gonna be enough for you to follow this course. And if you wanna support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.